Son who was crucified and yet entered into glory. May we, walking in the way of the cross, find it is for us the way of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The colleague. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in your tender love for all of our human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take our flesh and to suffer death upon a cross. May we follow the example of his great humility and share the glory of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may sit for the passion. You may read this please. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the woman, 
our house. The teacher asks, where is my destiny where I need to pass over to my disciples? He will show you a large room of things. So the next time ready, make preparations for us there. So, the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. One who is it? They began to distress to say to him, and after another. He said to them, It is one of twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl of me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took the loaf of bread. And after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them. And all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink of it in the kingdom of God. When they had sung with him, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written. I will strike the shepherd, and you the sheep will be scattered. But after I have raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. He just said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will be me three times. But he said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to the place of Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, and James, and John, and began to distress and agitate him. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even unto death. Remain here and keep out of and go in with the Father. He threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit in me is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more the came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came and filled time and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayers are hand. Immediately, while he was sleeping, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him, there was a crowd with swords and guts from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now, the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man, the rest in the family, and the other man. So, when he came, he went up to him at once, and said, Rabbi, I will kiss him. Then, they laid hands on him, and arrested him. But one of those who stood near, drew his sword, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his head. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? 
day after day, I was with you in the temple of teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let these scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. Then Jesus, sorry, then took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at fire. No. The chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, but he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of God seated at the right hand of the Paul and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do you still need witnesses? You have made it less to me. What is your position? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him and to strike him, saying to him, The guards also took him over and beat him. While Jesus was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came back. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also will with us, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. Then he went out into the court. Then the cup broke, and the servant girl of seeing him began again to say to the bystanders, but again he denied it. And after a while, the bystanders again said to Peter, But he began to curse and swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered. That Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will be angry three times. And he broke down and died. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bowed to Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, he answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges you have brought against him. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, at the festival, he used to release a prisoner, anyone to for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now, the man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them. Do you want me to release you to pay off the things? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release the rabbis for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. They shouted back. 
Why did you ask them? But they shouted all the more. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after plotting Jesus, he handed them over, handed them over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. struck his head with a reed, spat on him, and knelt down and pledged to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. They led him out to crucify him. They compelled the pacifier who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon Serene, father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called the cover, the Thomas, right? And they offered him wine mixed with blood, and he did not take it. And they crucified him, and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning, and they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against the bread, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right, and one on his left. Those who passed by the right hand, shaking their heads and saying,
the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and pray. Let us pray. Lord, bless this message. And shall it put it on. Grant that this will serve and try to take thought and decision of expression to protect the world of the world. Grant that your people be sacrificed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, we celebrate Palm Sunday in memory of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Palm Sunday, entry to Jerusalem. Palms were stolen in his way on this occasion. The people proclaimed him king as he entered. But do you know that the same crowd that praised him, shared him, reverent him, honored him, respected him, just a few days later, they renounced him, rejected him, gave up on him, and abandoned him. They were the same people who conspired to crucify him. Tremendous life lesson. As we go through life, do not expect that everything will always go smoothly. The very things, circumstances, and persons that contribute to one's great can contribute to one's dumb hole. In the case of Jesus, this was done so that scriptures may be. Nevertheless, such a message for Palm Sunday is quite a good thing. As we study the life of Jesus through the pages of the gospel, we find that the life of Jesus is centered on the last week of his early life. A reflection on that week of events will show how Jesus final day of the ministry went from adulation to renunciation, from adoration to repudiation, from exaltation to denigration, from celebration to condemnation. Palm Sunday begins the week that gives us the shouts of praise. A week that reveals the depth of denial and betrayal. It also reveals the duplicity of deceitfulness of Judas. Can you imagine how deceitful Judas was? Jesus taught him, sucked with him, and yet he had the gumption, the temerity, the nerve to conspire in the betrayal of the one who did so much for him. Have you ever experienced this in your life? How did you feel? How does Jesus feel when despite all that he had done for us and betrayed and betrayed by what we do and say? By what we cherish in our hearts. We may pretend to be good and make people believe that we are so good. But deep down inside of us, we function like a dagger ready to enter the entrance of one another's doors. Man may not see and know for why, but God knows the secrets of our hearts. It is therefore our duty and responsibility to ensure that our thoughts are aligned to Jesus. In such a case, today's epistle by Paul to Philippians Enterprises, Philippians 2, 5, in clauses, let the same mind be in you. That was in Christ Jesus. So I was left at the 
was written to the first church he established. At that time of his writing, Paul was in prison and experiencing great opposition from other Christians. The immediate purpose of this letter was to thank the Philippian Christians for the help they had given him when he was in need. At the same time, he was frustrated, reassured, so that they may have courage and confidence despite all their troubles. This is a message that was very well there and is even more relevant now. We are now living in unprecedented times. 99% of our conversations begin like this. Never before have we seen anything like this. The world seems to be taken over by one disaster after another. Death by thousands, sometimes taking entire families out, war destroying entire towns, cities and people, destruction, all of financial disasters, and diseases for which we seem there are no solutions. Paul was giving the Philippians a blueprint for living in the face of their troubles. He pleased with them that in spite of what they are going through, the attitude should be one like Jesus. He's instructing them on how they are to live. So he begins by telling them that the same life in you as in Christ Jesus. Now you may be asking, Is that same mind. How is this even possible? He was God and I am not. That can be true. We cannot do what Jesus did, but we can have the same attitude towards Queen. And that attitude will drive our actions. So how is this possible? It becomes possible for us to do once you have an example, once you see it done. And that is what Christ Jesus has done for us. He has given us a visible example of a life of pure love and service. He has shown us what it looks like when someone puts aside his or her self-interest to do something for others. In so doing, you are taking on a different view, a different nature that seemingly resembles that of Christ. The Holy Spirit is about to take control. And the songwriter puts it. And what you can do if you don't see it with me. Let your living waters flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit.
you fought the same temptation, you fought and experienced the same struggles. Yet before of his divine nature, he was able to overcome them and to live out his divine nature in the flesh. And what Paul is saying is that because we have Jesus living in us, And then a strip that in my nature, Jesus living in us, enables us to live out the divine nature and overcome the flesh of the desires. Paul wants to make it very clear that Jesus was and is God. He was not just a teacher, not just a healer, he was and is God incarnate. John 1, 14 says, the world was made fresh and built among us. But he did not think that by force he should try to remain equal to God. Instead of his own free will, he gave up all that and took the nature of a servant. He became like a human being and became human likeness. He gave up being God so that he might become a human baby who gave up heaven to be born in his people. The contrast is clear. The value system of the world and the value system of Jesus are different. In our own world, you have the most money and the most power and the most prestige and is worth the most. In Jesus' world, it is just the opposite. He who is in Christ is he who does not live for himself, but for others. He who will be the greatest among you is he who is your servant. This is a perfect example of humility. Jesus demonstrated this. Christ did not consider his godly status as authority, something to be used for his own personal benefit. He understood their value, but was willing to sacrifice them in the service of a higher value, the salvation of humankind. Jesus was humble and always walked the path of obedience all the way to the death of the cross. For this reason, God raised him to the highest place of power and gave him the name that is greater than any other name. And so in honor of the name of Jesus, all things in heaven and earth, and in the world will be fallen the news, and all will be open to proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. Even with this, with this example, always before us, we will never do these things perfectly well. But God's help, with God's help, we can get better and better at bringing our lives in line with Christ's life. Our attitude in line with this. My brothers and sisters, are we waiting? Are we waiting for that one big experience where we can demonstrate our humility and servanthood to God by giving ourselves in some heroic fashion? Maybe we are saying one day when I win the Lord, I will do so much for the church or the man at the corner of the streets. But in reality, that is not God's idea of service to Him. In reality, service to God happens in small, everyday, somewhat uneventful occurrences of our lives. It is our attitude. Of a mindset of serving others instead of being served, of giving rather than getting, of obeying rather than passing orders and of dominating others. It is how this is lived out daily. How we treat the young man hustling vegetables on the street, how we talk to the man collecting our garbage. It is most often not seen in how we treat those who are socially above us. How we treat those who are socially below us. Let me say that again. It is most often not seen in how we treat those who are socially below us. 
but how would you do is you are socially with us. Jesus is speaking to us in the gospel. Living with us, the following example. Shows our obedience to his word. Be humble. Don't worry.
continuing our sessions to pray today for Bishop Crow, retired Bishop Fly and Calvin, all of us, even the ministers, the evangelists, and all the people of God in this parish, in this diocese, in the church and the of the West Indies, and the wife and the community. And pray that you continue to be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, we pray for Trinidad today. We pray for Christy, our president, Keith, the Prime Minister, all members of Parliament, those serving in the Tobago House of Assembly, and the regional and rural corporations of the land. We pray for the business community. We pray that we continue to lead this nation in the of justice, truth, and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, we pray for you today, all those who are challenged with sin. Brothers and sisters who are going to return your home and their hospital. We look for you in a special way. Assistant all your care this morning at the hospital. We pray for healing and wholeness, wellness in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy. We look for before you the children of the nation, particularly the children of all the schools there, as in Andrew Cuba. China. We pray that as we reflect and rest in this purification, they will return with the strength and vigor to show respect to the classroom for their teachers and the teachers they have control of their classroom. We will lift up our children before you and we pray for the parents who guide them, the teachers and the children. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We continue on the sessions using the B. Page 107, and we share the decisions. As we begin, we are sharing as I said. Father, we pray for your holy heart in the church.
and that is therefore confess our sins using form B. Most merciful God,
three and nine.
for the second number 539, 539, and see the right and right away. 539. So, number 593, 593.
Cartier with the number 621. And the city of the 621. Take off very accent. 621.
pleasure having you. And we pray that you continue to visit with us every so often as long as possible. Thank you and be blessed. on this Passion Sunday, I want to thank you all for coming. Thank you for the witness in this part of God's vineyard. I want to thank all those who prepared the palms for this great occasion. I thank the boys and my colleagues in Walter, for making this worship session be successful. It's an honor again to see Mrs. Ben. I did not see her when I got to her. Um,
Tuesday, and there is a session at uh, Mr. Tilman. Do you have it in your list, Carl? Good, so I'll get that to you. Thank you.